Hello, I'm Rosemary and welcome to another Whiskey Wednesday. Today I want to talk to you about a Speyside whiskey. And of course, Speyside is kind of where it's at. They would certainly say that they're the most important of Scotland's whiskey regions. I don't want to start any fights about that. But it's not a region that I have done very many whiskey reviews from. I've got pages of notes about Glenfiddichs and Macallans and things, but I, I do feel it's an area I need to revisit. But if we look at what's in my whiskey barrel at the moment, you'll see that I've got a Glendronach 12 year old, I've got the Milton Duff 10 year old that we've talked about recently, it's part of my whiskies for 2020 Christmas. And I've also got a Glenfarclas 15 year old, which is where I think the magic starts with Glenfarclas. Now, I don't go on about colour very much, um, but I thought it was worth pouring a wee dram of the Glenfarclas because here you can see the really rich sherried colours. And this also resides in its sherry barrels. And so, because these are the whiskies that I'm I have had most in my uh, drinks cabinet over the last um, probably four or five years, if I'm perfectly honest. I suppose my thoughts about Speyside have been very much coloured by them. But of course, it's not all about sherry barrels down there. Um, but nevertheless, I'm going to save that for later. Waste not, what, what? Nevertheless, when I got my bottle of the whiskey that I want to tell you about uh, today, the um, Cask Speyside, it's a 10 year old, and it's from A.D. Rattray, an independent merchant on the east coast, no, ha, stupid woman, on the west coast uh, in Ayrshire. I was totally amazed at the colour of yeah, you see, I've got myself into that really sherried mindset. And I've forgotten that they knew a thing or two about American oak as well. So my mind, my whiskey memories, my what I have in here of whiskey flavours was discombobulated because this was not what I had been expecting. I first got to know about A.D. Rattray when a really nice guy in the whiskey industry, Kevin Abrook, um, he used to be with William Grant and Sons and just such a nice guy and he was infinitely patient with me when I was starting out on my whiskey adventure, wanting to share my enthusiasm with other people. And um, I have got the deepest respect for him and his knowledge happily retired now and painting to his heart's content. I think he's going to start um, uh, painting whiskey distilleries, which seems to be a perfect marriage of uh, enthusiasms for him. Anyway, uh, we were in Ayrshire on holiday while well, traveling down uh, south again from Scotland. And I said to him, is there anywhere I should visit? And he said, yeah, you should go and have a look at Aiden Rattray. And so we did, and that was my introduction to Stronachy. And I'll be um, posting some more. Um, I'll be posting. Honestly, I'm so excited about being with you, my dear whiskey friend. I'll be posting a Stronachy review again uh, on my channel. Make sure you subscribe, by the way, so that you're always hooked into this. Um, but I spent a good bit of money in AD Rattray when I went in there. What I bought from them was the cast strength Orkney in this range, as well as the strong kids. And gosh, that's a cracker if you like an 18 year old Orkney. I would have to, as a guest with a tiny pot. But I thought I'd try something else from them. And so I ordered this space side. And it's, well, we know it's American oak just by having a look at it. And sometimes I think, well, American oak can just give you a whiskey that feels like going home or coming home when you've been trying lots and lots of other things. I always find it incredibly um, reassuring and grounding. Um, 
one of the ones that I particularly go to is, um, let's see, I can't remember, what a stupid woman, you know, come to me during the course of this, or perhaps when I've just finished. So let's just get on with the tasting of this. Really light notes, especially after one of those. Fruity, all the things you would expect, baked apples, but this is, this is just, your tart to tan in a glass, really, your apple tart to tan, just as it should be. Not so much on the vanilla front, actually, it's really sort of lightly caramelized green apples. And the wonderful toasty um, patisserie notes that you would imagine in a high class patisserie, mooching around Paris, opening the door of one of the great uh, patisseries in Montmartre and this is the smell that assails you. Just lovely and you saw I poured it very much just as we started off. So that would doubtless grow. Now constraint can mean kind of anything, you know, up to 50% but this is a 46%. I think, yeah, 46%. So easy to drink at that strength and it's only 10 years old so the same age as that Milton Duff actually in the Gordon and MacPhail discovery range so for a lot of people and I know you won't be a whiskey snob out there watching me my one true whiskey friend but you know a lot of people wouldn't get out of bed for something under 12 years old and gosh you're missing out you really are Although my whiskey women always reckoned that the 10 year old Glen Farkless was too young. They, they got excited at the 15. There we are, right. Mm. Zesty. That is what I would have to say to that. Zesty and mouth watering. It's just so bright and so light and so refreshing it's it's really gorgeous and it's only now as i'm swallowing that there is any hint of pepper coming through from that um yes it's dancing but it's dancing with all those fireworks of excitement that are in the top of my mouth it's it's just lovely and if you're a cogitator, if you're a whiskey cogitator, and you really like to sit and think, mm, that's okay. mm. you probably like to have a wee bit of time between each of your sips. But for me, this just says, come on, come on, come on, get on with your second sip. And maybe it is because of the uh, finish on that first sip which is becoming slightly panic now on the sides of my tongue but of course that is good because not only has that you know lip smacking mouth watering firework display made me want my second sip those tannic notes make me want my second sip as well who am I to refuse And then that settles down and that becomes more honeyed and buttered. The apples are rich. The pastry is just done. Those pastry notes I talked about in terms of the patissier, there's not a hint of overcooking with that. They're just flaky and crispy and buttery and mmm spiced, spiced in the most beautiful honeyed way and then the pepper which of course we always expect um, with our whiskey is just sitting there in the bottom. Now I have no idea who has provided the whiskey that is in this bottle. 
the website for AD Rattray, R A W T R A Y, says it's one of the major leading uh, distilleries on Speyside. So I have to have my little journey down there and see, in, in theory, in practice, you know, just in make believe and get a few bottles in of the big guys and see if I can begin to wonder whose this might be. But you know what? It's a really delicious whiskey. Now this is most unusual for me, isn't it? I'm going to have a third sip before I add any water. And again, more and more, it's about this is 10 years old, you know, it's not a 12 or a 15 or anything else. But the beautifully rounded flavour of it is extraordinary. Now, 46%, yes, of course, you think, well, up the alcohol volume and you're going to get more flavour. Of course you do, can't argue against that. But gosh, it's cleverly done. It really is. Now, if you counted the drops of water that went in, there were probably about three. So in a peedy bit in the bottom of the glass, I hope that's not overkill. If it is, I just have to add a little bit more whiskey. The nose at this stage has become quite muted. And maybe it's just because I'm used to it, but I think that quite often happens with the younger uh, American oak matured whiskies. It's not going to stop them really enjoying it. Yes. It's sort of, I mean, it, it makes it more accessible for sure. But if you're spending your time watching whiskey videos, dear viewer, you probably love your whiskey. And for me, this whiskey is better without the water. I do like to have a bit of ice in it. You could use a whiskey rock if you like. Big debates about which way, you know, you prefer that, whether you like the brand rock or if you like to actually put ice in it. My mouth is watering. I'm absolutely dribbling. And I'm usually quite controlled and, you know, in in this way, but well, you can tell how much I've enjoyed that bottle, can't you? Will I buy it again? That, of course, is always the big question. And how much do you think it is? Well, let me tell you, yes, I will buy it again. And in fact, looking at the amount I've got left, I think I'd better buy it again pretty quickly. Um, how much is it? It's about £35 a bottle. Astonishingly good value. Because, um, well, I didn't check the price of the game Clone Parkless, but I should imagine that that's in the 40s. Um, I think, in fact, I think all three of these are the Gordon and McPhail is 49. I think that was 43. So I, I didn't check that one up. But, um, you know, they're big names. This should be a big name. Um, and I would sincerely recommend it to you. And A.D. Rattray, I mean, they've got a long history, uh, but also they're very involved with the Morrison family, of Morrison the Moor. And when you can travel again, do go to Glasgow. It's such exciting things happening there, whiskey-wise. We've talked a little bit just recently about the Glasgow Distillery, and their amazing 1770 uh, releases. But also the Clydeside Distillery is just brilliant. And I think that is the best distillery tour I've ever done. And that is Morrison owned. And the bottle shop in the distillery features a lot of stuff from A.D. Rattray. And indeed, I believe my good friends at the Good Spirits Company usually keep this as well. So, what more can I say? Absolutely nothing. I just, 
wholeheartedly recommend this to you. £35, it's a sniff. I think some people like to know what they're drinking and I think that possibly we can really miss out on something special if that's the case. Um, it's a bit like supermarket own label whiskies. Very often they're brilliant, but do we buy them? I, don't know. I think, you know, little Speyside single malt getting a gold medal at the recent IWSC, International Wine and Spirit Society, um, competition should tell us that we shouldn't be standoffish about this. But of course, it's like the toiletries you choose to put on show in your bathroom. Very few people put supermarket own label or, or whatever in there. So I think whiskey snobbery is a really big thing. I think it's something that I'm really keen to break down. And quite honestly, yes, if you've got all the money in the world, you'll find a better whiskey than this. But for £35? Come on! A D Rattray, R A Double T R A Y. Buy it. Cheers for now. See you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, I suppose now that Glen Park Press is poured. Oh my goodness, that is so different. Speyside's got a lot to offer. I need to go. I need to have a good old explore.